Fish on, baby! Oh, jumper! What is going on you guys? Cheers and welcome to another episode. Tika and I have been out here camping in the snow for the last, this is the fourth day or something, living primitive in the yurt tent. But today's an exciting day because we are going out fishing. I wanted to check out this creek in the snow. I brought some fly fishing gear along. We're gonna see if we can catch something to eat and then we'll come back here to camp. Check this out, that snow is dense. So we're gonna get a lot of water uh, per bucket load of snow. Oh yeah, nice. Here I've got some biscuits. We're gonna deep fry these guys. Oh yeah. Now there's a breakfast for you. Probably hot. Probably not something you want to eat every day, but you know what, we're working hard out here chopping lots of wood, checking wildlife cameras. We checked out the uh, game cameras, by the way, in the last episode. If you guys missed that one, feel free to check that out before this video, after this video, it doesn't matter. Let's take a look at these little, oh, these biscuits, look at that. Oh, steamy hot. Mm. Oh. You want some? Mm. Dude, there's coyotes still like howling everywhere saw a bunch of them on the uh, wildlife cameras too healthy looking coyotes they almost look like like wolves i mean they're they're big <laughs> really big coyotes mm. Now, a lot of you guys always ask me, what do I carry for protection when I'm either out in the mountains or way out here uh, in the remote wilderness on my property? But this baby here is a 44 Magnum uh, lever action rifle uh, based off of the Winchester 1892. So that's when these came out, uh, was in the late 1800s. And the, the model 1892 pretty much uh, was what ended up just sweeping through the Wild West. That's what everyone wanted. It was the strongest. Uh, most amazing rifle that money could buy at the time. It's an absolutely beautiful rifle. So let's see what we can do. We got a couple targets down there. Uh, let's see if we can hit them. Oh yeah, right in the center. Awesome. That's been a childhood dream of mine uh, to have my own target range just right on my property. So this here is just the, the camp range, but a lot of you guys sounds like are excited about it. And uh, so we're gonna establish a larger range further north of the property. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see more range updates. I know YouTube doesn't like that stuff very much. So make sure to give the video a like, who knows uh, what YouTube will do with that kind of stuff. I'd say now that that's out of our systems, time to go fishing. I've got the uh, fly pole ready to go. We've got the net 
Tika's currently on a leash just because I saw some hawks flying around and they, they could probably grab her and fly off with that little dog, so. <laughs> this is looking so good. I saw one surface right over here. next to us. Um, I haven't tied up any flies yet, but here's what we got in our little fly wallet. So I'm not exactly sure what you guys think would be most successful. You know, let's just start with one of these dark leech patterns. With fly fishing, as you guys always know, I'm totally new to it. So <laughs> just let me know whatever you see that I could improve on my, my fly fishing. So the knot I'm using is the improved clinch knot. Not like it matters a whole bunch, just know whatever knot, know a good knot and know how to tie it well. That matters more about which magical knot you're using. Tag in, we're gonna throw in our pocket. Let's go ahead and just move up stream a little bit more, try some other spots. I have some other fishing gear with me too. Maybe we can switch around on the flies a bit. All right, so we're gonna try and get one by that waterfall right there. That should be a really good holding area whenever you guys see a little creek flowing into another creek. That's generally where trout will love hanging out because that's where the food spills into the water. We'll switch over to a different fly too. I want a smaller presentation. <laughs> With trout, I've always learned that uh, you can never really go too small, but uh, you can definitely go too big. Oh, geez, here I am. I'm already, oh, and I lost the fly. Oh no, there it is. Now this guy here is kind of, uh, I don't even know what to call that. It's got a little golden bead on the head, some green wire tied around it, black with a little bit of shiny in there. All these flies that I fish are flies that you guys tied for me. I do most of my shout outs on Instagram. Uh, so if you missed it there, thank you to everyone who sends uh, all of those wonderful things, be it flies or cool food or whatever to the PO box. Let's see what this little bugger can do. Let me know if you know, how, how, like what fly and what technique would you fish this spot here? Okay, so I brought down another rod. This guy here has the bullet lure on it. We're gonna sneak in here. I'm pretty sure this is where it's gonna get pretty wild, pretty fast. Cast it right there into the waterfall. All right, we're upstream of the waterfall. Now we're gonna go through the waterfall all the way. Got a good feeling about this one. Oh, there we go, fish on, baby. Oh, jumper, jumper, jump. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, get out of that stuff. Fish on, baby, let's go. Bullet lure strikes again. Oh, net, net, net. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful trout. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, in the net. Gorgeous, gorgeous silver looking trout. Look at this beauty of a, oh, he came off, already came off. He was barely hooked on the bullet lure. Look at that, gorgeous, gorgeous trout. Absolutely beautiful. So this fish has looked like a rainbow trout and it might be a hybrid actually. I'm pretty sure this might be a cutthroat rainbow hybrid trout but check out this marking that's not blood this is a cutthroat marking right there so man <laughs> dinner is served thank you buddy healthy trout wow that just went so fast guys i need to learn to fly fish better i got i really got to learn to fly fish you just you can't argue with the bullet lure though <laughs> 
Oh, plus we need some dinner. We're running low on food at the camp, so we gotta get a little bit of food on the table. So let's see if we can catch another one. Man, it's a really steep bank. If I hook a big one, I don't know how we're gonna get him up here. You know, this is too perfect for uh, to not just try the bobber and a worm. So let me grab that and we'll be right back here. All right, so we've got the old slip float on here again with a four pound leader, some spaced out split shot down to a tiny little hook. We're gonna throw on a worm. Unfortunately, these worms, last night it was so cold that the worms all froze and died, but they should still be fresh. Oh man, that's some sad worms. There you go, bobbers in the water. Try over here again. Come on, Bobber. Come on, go down, go down, go down, right there, right there, right there. Right there. There's a massive, massive fish down there. I'm not sure if it's a trout. It could be a big carp. All right, we're gonna sneak down to this big fish. <laughs> I wanna know what that is. Man, dude, just have a look at that sunset though. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so nice to finally see the sun. It's just been rainy and snowy and cloudy for so long over here. Fish on. Oh, whoa, 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 good one, good one, good one. Whoa, whoa, I'd already like given up. I put the other camera away. Oh, it's a beautiful trout. Whoa, he's pulling drag. All right, I'm just gonna loosen it just a tad. Oh, he's powerful. Oh, he's like under us. No, no, get out of there, buddy, get out of there. Get out of there, come on. Oh, he's joined, he's joined. It's a giant trout. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, get out of the grass. Oh, oh God, my foot just went in the water. Oh, nice and easy. Come on. Come here, buddy. Whoa, just monster trout. Monster trout in the net. I knew there was a monster in here. Oh, he choked the bull lure. Look at that. Oh my goodness. There we go, we put this guy right to sleep. Thank you, buddy. We're gonna head back to camp now. It's gonna be totally dark by the time we get there, so we're gonna start up a fire and cook up some trout. Wow, what a beautiful evening, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, yes. Right at the last minute, I was ready to give up. I'd already put away the other camera, and this guy here happened. Giant, giant rainbow. See all the little crystals in the snow. It's just that that cold now. Tika, jump on in. Let's go. Let's go. Oh man, it's cold in here too. Oh man, we gotta get a fire going ASAP. This right here is a fire making tool and it is called a fire piston. If you guys have never heard about a fire piston before, uh, basically the way that you ignite this stuff here, this black stuff, that is char cloth. It's essentially uh, charcoal fluff. <laughs> so the way that the fire piston works is that you compress this piston 
so hard that the air inside compresses to the point where it gets so hot that it ignites that little itty bit of char cloth in the end of that stick. Think it'll work? Let's check this out. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Fire. Yes. Yes. Oh, fire piston fire. Wow. All right. Oh, oh, wow. It's hot, hot, hot. Ooh, yes. What I'll do probably in a future episode is I'll show you guys how to make that char cloth. We'll make some from uh, clothing, from like cotton clothing, and then I'll also show you how to make some from some natural materials. So make sure that you guys are subscribed uh, if you guys enjoy the episodes and don't want to miss those next ones. Sometimes people ask, Life, you just, I mean, you have a lighter. Why didn't you just use your darn lighter? Well, guess what? Lighters are boring. It's too easy. <laughs> it's just too easy. I mean, sure, we turned on some lights so we could see something in here. But uh, but yeah, it's just it's a fun hobby of mine to just find new ways to make fire from scratch. And I'm trying to just progress uh, and advance as an outdoorsman and just a person enjoying just the weird, quirky things in the world. All right, let's make some food. So I'm absolutely not feeling like going out and gutting and cleaning fish in the ice cold. So we're going to make a venison stew tonight and we'll make the fish tomorrow for breakfast or lunch. It'll be delicious. We've got this giant portobello mushroom. <laughs> How huge this thing is. And mushrooms can usually just go in at the same time as the onions. One pound of ground venison. The beer is in the pot. In goes the garlic. It's a nice shot of Danish sea salt. Ain't gotta be too shy. Lots of other minerals besides sodium in there. So what we'll do next is just throw in, shave off a bunch of corn here. Uh, 
Well, let me know in the comments if you guys like Brussels sprouts. I've got just a handful of some sneaky little baby potatoes. Some red ones and some regular ones. And uh, for water, we're gonna use some uh, Rainier Glacial water from the glaciers of Mount Rainier. Hmm. Oh, dude, the smell of this is phenomenal right now. Wow. This is an exciting moment. <laughs> Cheers, you guys. Man, good good day fishing today. Just a good day. Good day in general. Mm. <laughs> oh, dude, that hits the spot so good right now. It is bitter, bitter cold outside right now. Mm, man, the venison is so good with the potatoes and the corn. That corn was a, oh, that was a good idea. I was going to roast over the fire tomorrow with the trout, but I'm glad that we threw some corn into this, this stew here. Tika's already enjoyed her dinner. <laughs> she's all sleepy and she's ready for bed. And honestly, I'm kind of ready for bed too.
just a little bit of embers left in here. It is freezing cold. So I need to chop some small wood just to get it back going again. Woke up to extremely cold temperatures. Everything is frozen over outside. Even Tika's upset that it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> Tika, come here. We're gonna start a fire outside as well. We're gonna cook up our fish. And then we got to get out to the cameras and uh, replace the SD cards on the cameras so that we can continue capturing uh, wildlife footage. And as you can see, everything I'm using out here is cast iron. Uh, I believe cast iron is probably the best thing to cook with when you're cooking over fires or on a wood stove. Uh, to clean up a cast iron, like what I did here with the uh, Dutch oven, is um, just throw some water in there while it's still hot. I did that last night and uh, just let the water soak in there just a little bit and that'll lift everything off. Scrub her out, throw her back over the heat, dry it off, rub on some oil, and you've got a perfect seasoning on your cast iron again. Now let's take a look outside and see what's going on out here. Uh. So the wind was blowing in this direction last night and look how all the ice, the crystals froze all just on that one side. It's very interesting. Look at that chain. <laughs> Good morning, missus. Good morning. So this big one here, I'm gonna take home, uh, eat them throughout the week, and uh, throw whatever I can't eat right away on ice. And then this one here is perfect size to throw on the grill. We're just gonna salt and pepper them and uh, cook this baby up. So we're gonna smear on just a little bit of, just drizzle a little bit of olive oil onto them. See how well cooked this trout is. Oh yeah, this guy's perfect. Whew. Look at that. Oh. I had four pieces of cheese, but it looks like Tika stole one.
Now we're talking. <laughs> so we'll just do a little bite of the corn here. Mm. Look at that crispy, crispy skin on the trout. Oh, Tika is asking for something. Tika, do you for once want some fish? <laughs> there we go. She's usually a little picky when it comes to comes to eating fish. Oh man, look at the meat just drop off of the bones there. That's absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna take this whole slab, throw it right there in this taco. A very simple taco, just some cheese. The trout. Cheers, that's all of you guys watching. As always, thank you. And dang, we're almost at half a million subscribers. It's absolutely crazy. So if you guys are enjoying the videos, aren't subscribed yet, feel free to join, join the family and subscribe and get us to half a million. Who would have believed that that would ever happen making making fishing videos? <laughs> yeah, absolutely crazy. So thank you seriously to all of you guys. Let's dig into this baby. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Whoa, this trout has some, some big cheeks. He's a cheeky one. Very, very pleasant flavored trout. Very delicious. Nice char on the skin. Mm. All right, we got the last SD card into the camera right over there. So I'm just chilling at the cliff, soaking in the view. It's absolutely beautiful, but uh, that's all I got for you guys. Remember to come and see me live at the Sportsman's Shows down in Puyallup on the 5th, Saturday the 5th, and uh, Portland, Saturday the 19th. <laughs> so I hope to see all of you guys there. Uh, remember, if you're brand new, subscribe, leave a like on the video, it helps a ton, drop a comment, I'll read them. And uh, I love all you guys. Thank you for joining on this one. And we'll see you all very soon for the next one. Till then, you all know it. Fish on, baby.